So yesterday, one of my clients comes in and she tells me that her son, who's a fan of the podcast, made the point that I speak far too quickly. So in a very leisurely pace, this is the Mastering Portrait Photography podcast. Right, I'm Steve. I'm the owner of FitLife Gym in Haddenham, uh, a long client of Paul Wilkinson Photography. That is true. A very long client. Yeah. Probably well 10, been. no, longer than 10 years. When did we first meet? Uh, it was linked to your sister's but I've known you Probably, with Butler's You did Tom Butler's 50th, right? Yeah. I reckon that would have been the first. That was 2005, yeah. I think. And then all the parties that followed there. Yeah. And then my sister's wedding. Yeah. It was where we got to know you properly, I think. Yeah, I think it probably was, wasn't it? Yeah. And then my wedding. Yeah. And then the gym. <laughs> For your wedding, <laughs> famously with a band with a broken bass oh, drum. Oh, yeah, and... yeah. You saved the day on that one. <laughs> what a bizarre thing. Yeah. Just happens the photographer has a bass drum pedal. I know. That, that's within driving distance during Literally, a wedding. Yeah. yeah. Turn it around in five minutes. Well, I, didn't even know, I didn't even know about it. No. They kept it from me. Yeah, well, there's no which point. Which was good. That's what we do, though. You, you, the, idea, the thing about being a wedding photographer is you never tell the bride and groom anything wrong. That's gone wrong, yeah. You tell them afterwards and yeah, how it yeah, was yeah. fixed, and yeah. you only tell them, you know, and if there's a good something. story. And we have the same escalation here even now. Yeah. You know, deal with everyone except the bride and groom. Yeah. And yeah. then the order would be tell the groom, then the bride. Yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> I still don't think Jess knows. So uh, you're married, obviously, because I photographed your wedding. You have a beautiful wife and a beautiful son, Ezra. How old is he now? Nine months. And what's it like balancing being a new dad and running a business? Um, the, the hardest thing is, is really trying to dedicate the time to him, yeah. um, which in some ways it's, you know, it's not nine to five, as you know, so I'm able to sometimes go back for lunch yeah. and do things like that, which is great. But then there's other times where I don't see the, him at all because I'm out before he wakes up and I'm back after yeah so yeah i mean it's been i don't think it's affected me work-wise anyway um jess has been unbelievable she's just taken to motherhood incredibly well um and she ran the business with me so probably the big the hardest thing was losing her from the business full-time um so she obviously went on maternity leave yeah. but thankfully we filled her boots with some good people so it was made a little bit easier but yeah that was probably the biggest challenge was was losing her but to see her as a mother is worth it yeah she's done so well and it's made the transition like you said to be business owner and father much much easier <laughs> than it might have been if uh so give us a summary of fit life so i guess you'd call us a boutique gym we're not a big globo gym as they're, they're called um we pride ourselves a lot on our classes and the delivery of those um, but we are a gym and a studio, so we have a lovely gym as well. Um, I guess the difference for us is the customer experience. We try to pride ourselves on that. Um, you know, from the moment a member walks in the door, we try to look after them as best as possible. Uh, I think a big problem with the industry now is these faceless gyms sometimes that mm. have, you know, you go in and, and you're on your own. So that's what we're trying to fight against and uh, create more of an atmosphere and a welcome environment get to know everyone and uh, yeah just like I said more of a customer experience when you go to the gym Brilliant. I'm going to come back to the gym but mm -hmm. I wanted to start with your career prior to that mm -hmm. so you were a professional football player soccer player for my American okay. listeners we now have more American listeners wow, than okay. UK yeah, listeners soccer player then. so soccer player yeah I was uh, so that's kind of all I knew really so I obviously went through school paid a lot more attention to my football than I did academics. <laughs> um, but luckily it kind of paid off because I started at Wickham, which was the local team. How did you get spotted? Just playing for Tame. So I played for Tame boys, as they were yeah. called. So from aged eight, I think I was when I started. And by 10, I was picked up by Oxford originally. Um, but my dad, bless him, thought that I wasn't being treated well enough at Oxford. He wanted me. He 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 soon realised that you have to be the best player in the team yeah. to go all the way through. So I wasn't the best player at Oxford. So he pulled me out of there and sent me to Wickham. 
in hope that I'd be the best player in right. Wickham's team. And were you? It paid off. Like I, yeah, I'm, that's, so very, I, that's I, a modest answer. Yeah, I made. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't say I was the best player, but I was certainly one that they were looking up, looking at as yeah. potentially could could make it, um, which was great. So I went. I was there from twelve and um, got all the way through the youth teams. Made my first team debut at eighteen, and I played a handful of games. And then the thing with football managers change, and they suddenly don't like you as much as the previous one. So. I left there at 21. I went to Wimbledon, uh, which was fantastic. So that was dropping down a, a level, um, but it, it was awesome. I fell in love with football again. I was playing every week. We got promoted. We were really successful. And then I signed for Bournemouth, which everyone knows now is a Premier League team, but yeah. I was, that was League One. So still a fairly decent standard, but not making millions of pounds, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so that was a good time. Spent two years there. I ended up going back to Wimbledon for a little bit after that. Um, because I really enjoyed my time there. And then I went to Gillingham, which is over in Kent, yeah. and spent two years there. And then uh, I think it was that move, really, that I started to think about life after football. Yeah. I was still young. I think I signed Virginia at 26 or something yeah. like that. And what is the playing age? In well, I can still be playing now, right. definitely. I'm 32. Yeah. I've got friends that are still playing at a good level. Um, but I didn't really feel like it was fulfilling me anymore. Right. Um, what had changed? I think I think as soon as I signed for Bournemouth, who were a bigger club, the fun got sucked out of it a little bit. Oh, really? And it became more pressure. They signed me for a fair amount of money. They paid money for me. So I felt, I, I, I think I struggled to deal with that a little bit. Right. I didn't get off to the best start. Um, I kind of then started to feel like you know, I had to perform and yeah. if I didn't, I'd beat myself up about it. Right. And I just started experiencing more lows than I did highs. But you're still a great player. I'm still a, a good player. Um, <laughs> you're, you're not someone I can draw out on that. No, no. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I guess, you know, I was playing I was playing a decent standard of football. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, something just changed in me and I felt like I didn't really belong, I right. guess. It was really strange. Um and I think from that moment, I, I was obviously all I knew was ha was playing football, right? So yeah. I didn't start thinking I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this. Yeah. And even right up to the moment where I did leave, I still didn't think it was gonna happen. Um, but I started to write when I signed for Gillingham. I was living in London because I'd been playing for Wimbledon previously. I didn't want to move, so I was commuting out on the train. Right. And I started writing business plans on the right. train, just just as a gym owner. Yeah. Uh, it was something that I was drawn to. I'd started, Jess was really into fitness, yeah. as you know, and uh, we were living in London and it was the rise of this boutique studio vibe in London. Yeah. So it was all these really, really cool places opening around us that we would go, go to. And it just kind of drawn me into this new way of fitness. Um, and this is about, this is about eight or nine years ago now. And so, yeah, I just thought, do you know what, the area that I'm from, which is back here, would love this yeah if I could bring something like this back home I think it would go down really well yeah so yeah I just started writing the business plan and, and um, the plan wasn't for a gym it was just for a studio so just classes right and um, so it was that model and the more I started researching it and getting into it the more I wanted to do it right but I still thought it was way off you know I was still playing in league one at the time yeah. playing every game had you know pretty successful time there but um, then circumstances started to happen where I thought actually do you know what I'm, I, I don't like doing this career anymore uh, you're, you're, there's no freedom in it um, yeah. you're completely <laughs> I mean you get a lot of free time don't get me wrong because yeah. you, you don't work long hours it's a, but it's theoretical freedom yeah you know um, you, you shot Tom Bridgman's wedding I remember and it. I was there for a few hours and I said you cannot put these photos up <laughs> because I'm, I'm going to be here I didn't know if I could bring that story up but no yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you can now obviously um, yeah, yeah no, I, I had a massive it. match the next day and you said um, to me you said we cannot publish this picture yeah, I've got a game so tonight. I had one of the biggest games of my career I was captain of Wimbledon playing MK Dons the first ever time live yeah. on ITV the next yeah. day and, you were and my manager had said to me, you can go for uh, until nine o'clock and I need you at the hotel by 9.30. And no one can know about this. So that's why I said to you straight away, you cannot post any photos. <laughs> I've got this really beautiful picture yeah, of you yeah, and Jess yeah. at our wedding I and know, I couldn't I use know. it. So things like that, you know, it was, 
you know, it was one of my best friends getting married. Yeah. I missed the ceremony because I was at training. Yeah. I just made the meal. I was there for a few hours. I had to leave. Yeah. So it's things like that that start to, you start to think, is this really worth it? Blah, blah, blah. Um, and also a big factor was that I didn't have a family at that point. Yeah. So I was about to get married. Fine. Yeah. Jess had her own career as a teacher. I think if I had Ezra now and I was trying to make that decision, it'd be a whole different ball game. Yeah. To walk away from like a, a decent salary to start up from scratch would yeah. be really difficult. But, you know, it was just the right time. So my contract came to an end at Gillingham. Um, I was promised a new contract, which I agreed to. Went in to sign it that day and they just turned around and said, we're gone with someone else. So there's no longer a contract here. And it was just things like that. And then I agreed a contract with Oxford so I was thinking, oh, this is good. You know, I'm moving back home. Yeah. Again, they all went and signed it. The manager got sacked. <laughs> oh, no. uh, um, and a new manager came in and offered me a trial. And my ego said, no, thank you. Um, I thought I was going to sign here. So, and then the only other offers I got were kind of up north, um, Shrewsbury, yeah. places where I'd have to relocate and move to. And Jess put her foot down and said, I'm, I, I want to live where I want to live. We'd bought a house where we live now. And yeah. She wanted to live in it, which is fair enough. So it was just that, and I just thought, actually, this is the time now. I don't, I don't want to live away from my new wife. I want to uh, <laughs> live with her, and so yeah, that was it. I just drew a line under professional football. I was still playing. I was still playing um, semi-professional, so I had to bring some money in it. Yeah. Um, and then just set up the boot camp straight away. Uh, that that. That told me that there was definitely a market for it. Oh God, yeah. yeah. Um, so you came and took some shots yeah. back then yeah. when I just just started that, and uh, yeah, I mean, had them had nothing then really. So and it was growing community and great people that live here. So yeah, yeah it's, that soon told me that there was a market for a gym here, and then the search started basically. And did you have? I mean, had you thought ahead enough to have money put aside for setting up a business? Uh, no, but. Um, as you know, my dad passed away ten, 10 years ago. Exactly. So uh, there was inheritance money there that um, that I hadn't really used. Yeah. I mean, I'd I bought a house based on a big mortgage um, and I could have took that money, I guess, and bought a house, but I, I just had it there yeah. and, and used it really to set up the gym. Yeah, very sadly, I never got to meet your dad. But no, no, great man. Who was a business owner himself? Right. He had a um, a vintage car business, which was great. I didn't realise that was his business. Yeah, yeah. Because of business. course, he photographed the car yeah. at your wedding. So that was one that he built, right. which is really cool to I have didn't that. Know there. that. So yeah, that was his business. So it was, it's kind of you know people say to me it's a great thing that you did that because he would have probably done the same you know yeah. to set up something that you're passionate about. Yeah. So yeah, that was that was where the the bulk of that money went was on that um, sorry, my, in my head I'm dancing around questions and you yeah. just hit on something and it was I suspect it's a question I should ask later but I'm going to ask it now because it's in my head how important do you think it is that as a business owner you do something that you're passionate about like I, in my opinion it's the most right. the most important um, if you're setting up a business based on money I just I just find it very difficult to believe that you'll make it successful. You know, Paul, as well as anyone, how challenging it can be at times. And you question, why am I, <laughs> why am I doing this? Like, it's so hard. No, it's, no, no, it's always um, good. It's always a good news obviously, story. Obviously, like, think? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, to everyone else, it looks like the dream, you're yeah. doing your dream, right? And we are, you know, you're super passionate about photography. Yeah. I'm super passionate about health and fitness. And we're doing our dream careers, but there's super lows in that. Like, you know, there's times where you're you're questioning why you're doing it. And I think if if you're if the reason isn't that you love it and that you don't want to get up at five six o'clock in the morning yeah. the next day and go and do it all over yeah. again, I think you'll struggle. Um, so to be passionate about what you're doing, I think, is one of the main reasons why you should start. A Has owning. <clears throat> I mean, I, I suppose I should put a little bit... I mean, I'll put a proper background in when I do an intro. I'll record that at some point. You know, you, you have created something really quite spectacular. Mm. It is amazing. And, you know, I knew from the minute I came in and photographed you and Jess standing on a pile of rubble. Yeah. <laughs> in what was at one point... A, it was a doctor's, it was a doctors, health centre, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. 
um, you could just see there's a glint in yours and Jesse's eyes and it was lovely that it was the two of you mm. and I think we'll come back to that thread of it in a moment I could see that there was going to be something quite special not least of it because the building is unique yeah, <laughs> you're right. going to have to do something special because that was it, even now it still doesn't look like a gym no not, not really. at all um, I guess where I'm, I'm heading with it is that vision for the two of you about running this gym and creating this thing, in the end, it's still very much a business. It has, you know, <laughs> P&L. Yeah, it exactly. Has yeah. Investors, I think you probably have now mm. looking at, you know, what you've built. Mm. And how much of a headache is that? How much time do you spend? It's getting, I actually am finding it getting harder. Right. Um, which is strange because we're kind of getting through that startup phase. Yeah. I mean, we're still new. We've only we've just come out to three years that we've been open, but um, for some reason, I am finding it harder and harder because it does end up becoming you've got to be making money at the end of the day, uh-huh. and um, and we are and we are profitable. But it's uh, you know you start to put more and more pressure on yourself a little bit to deliver. We've got and we've now got this reputation. So at the start, when we start set it up. I was just trying to create this buzz and this buzz and yeah. this buzz. You know, I was yeah, so, yeah. so full of it about how amazing it was going to be. And, and um, it is. And it I is mean, amazing. I, I think and then we opened yourself, it and everyone yeah. was like, wow, this is amazing. And that kind of buzz, I feel, is, is slowly going away. And it's at this point now where I'm like, right, well, what's next? You know? yeah. Where am I taking this now? I can't let this go stale. Yeah. And that is what I'm really trying to find. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's strange. It's. Uh, I know what you mean. I I love it. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I still get there at yeah. half five every morning. I absolutely love it. And, but what I'm saying is that I I had this huge amount of energy when we set it up, and I it was all I cared about. And now I've got to this point where I've had it for three years. Where can I take this energy, and where can I put it to yeah. make this even better? Yeah. And um, that's why I say it's getting harder because. There was only one focus before, was let's get people in here and show them how amazing this is, yeah. and let's make it amazing. Yeah. Now it is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do I keep it amazing? Yeah. How do I keep people Const- excited? Con- to constant keep coming? change, yeah. probably. Yeah. So we're at that. We're at that point. You know, we're at that point where we have to try and introduce something else, or just make tweaks here and there that keep people interested. Yeah. And I, I find that quite hard. I'm finding yeah. that quite hard. Yeah. I know, I know what you mean, um, and I, I talk about it a little bit here sometimes. In that, every, I think every two years, yeah, I've probably gone and looked for help. Yeah, you, you told me that. It's just a great thing to do, and I, just, I, I think that's where I'm at. Yeah, I'm struggling to see it myself now because I've been in it so long. Yeah, I almost need someone externally, not my staff, because they do they do have input, a massive amount of input, but they're also in it. Yeah. Someone externally that can come in and say. Yeah. Why don't you do that? Yeah, and 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 I've I mean recently we've just gone through another. I I, I talk about going up through the gears. Yeah, you know I've got I, the car is driving pretty well. Yeah, let's change gear yeah. and do something different. Yeah, and it sometimes it's it's simple stuff and sometimes it's it's full on complicated stuff. Yeah, you know because uh, I mean you are going to have the same conversations that we had when we took on a studio. Yeah, because I had a little studio we were profitable everything was running fine. Mm-hmm. And then we decided to have a bigger studio. Yeah. A proper, you know, prob- probably for me a forever studio. This yeah, would be the end of my career yeah, here, yeah, I would yeah. think. Yeah. Uh, unless something fundamental happens. Um, but yeah, every two two years I've I've asked someone mm-hmm. cold. Mm. Not that they're cold. I mean, as it asked someone to come in and have a look. Yeah. And I think that's that's helped me. I have no idea whether that's... I had the help on a personal level after being open about six months. Because I had this little bit of... I wouldn't call it a breakdown, right? But I had this um, after six months of us being open. I honestly was was driving myself into the floor, yeah. Um, and I couldn't see a way out. I was doing so many sessions, yeah. So couldn't delegate anything because it was my baby. <laughs> yeah. I had the staff there; they were doing nothing because I wouldn't give it to them. Yeah. So I did find the, the help from a business coach on a personal level. Yeah. But I need one, I think, from a 
looking at the whole business and saying, well, this is what you need to do. Yeah, because I, 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 I think one of the reasons, there's a couple of reasons why I was really keen to talk to you yeah. on the podcast, partly because it's just interesting to talk to you. And I use the podcast as an excuse to talk to interesting people. <laughs> I mean, you, you kind of these days, you're sort of part client, part mate. Yeah, you know, yeah definitely. I, I hope, you know, I hope that's, that's true. But I, as an observation, one of the things that intrigues me is what you live is a very similar existence to photographers. Mm. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, this is a photography podcast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. We're occasionally, carried away here, occasionally. Right? Well, no, for me, it's because it's about business. Yeah. It's also about the act. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. every day you're in front of clients, and every oh, day you, I mean, you have got you, you. And I wanted to talk a bit about this, and I'm sure maybe this is the right moment. Is you have got this charisma, you have something about you that draws people towards you. Mm. And I've seen it in businesses all over the world where there's something about you and Jess that is truly enigmatic. You, you in particular have that. You could get people to run to the point of a heart attack yeah. without yelling at them. Mm. You have got that thing. Mm. Every time I see you in the gym, you're buzzing and you're excited. Yeah. Always. I am. On the gym floor is where I feel that buzz. But here's the question. How much of that is... And I'm not saying it's a, a, I'm not saying it's false or it's an affectation, but how much of that is the act of being Steve, the gym owner, owner, mm. Steve, the icon? And, oh, perhaps that's a bit, might be a bit strong, but yeah. do you know what I mean? You, you're you're the, the pivot around which everything revolves. Yeah. But then when when you lock the door, yeah. and you're last out, and you turn all the machines off, and it goes yeah. quiet, yeah. and you've got to worry about, oh, I've got to maintain that. We need to book mm-hmm. the other you know, cleaners, or mm. the locker keys are buggered again, or whatever mm. it is, you mm. know, the crap that you have to deal with. So what is the difference? I mean, you talked a little bit about, you know, that. It is pretty exhaustion. much that exact. <laughs> what you've hit the nail on the head. Like it's in front of everyone. I am that person that, yeah. you know, everything's great. Because honestly, but but that I'm not saying that I'm putting that on. And I don't think that you put it on. No. But as soon as you get that camera in your hand, you turn into not turn into it. It's it's just the natural thing that happens. Yeah. Is it for you? I don't know. Yeah, it is. No, absolutely. And it's the same for me. As soon as I'm in front of a class teaching, or as yeah. soon as I'm in front of a client, or even just walking around the gym, I feel so relaxed and so happy yeah. um, because I'm not thinking about the locker keys yeah. or the broken urinal yeah. or anything like that. I'm just thinking about these people that are experiencing what I've created yeah. and how happy I am that that's happening and that I want to help them get fit and healthy and whatever. Yeah. And that is what the passion is built on, yeah. that, the, those moments. Yeah. And it is, as soon as I, um, you know, those people aren't there anymore, that's when all those things happen and, and they build up and it's, it, it, yeah. it, that's when the challenges arise. Do you arise. think, because I, I guess a part of my curiosity is, is as, a, as a footballer, as a professional footballer, yeah. you know, you would train and train and train and train and train and if you were on your, if you were on top of it and you were fit, and right on your game, yeah. the manager would select you probably on a Friday for a Saturday game. I yeah, don't know how correct. close the selections yeah, yeah. were, something like that. And then all of those tears and coaches saying, stop doing it like this, do it like this, stop doing it like that, do it yeah. like this. Yeah. And, the, and the, the psychology of the performer, yeah. high performance psychology, at the end of yeah. the day, it's yeah. what all competitive sport is about. And then you go out onto the pitch mm. and everything just goes, fades into the background. Yeah, totally. Everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you focus on yeah. whatever the game strategy is. Yeah. Do you think that is something you were born with or you learned? Because you clearly have it. You, you have that. Um, I, think, I think you can learn it, but it's, I think it's just driven from experience. Um, it's some. <sighs> People have it more than others. Yeah. People have a, self, a built-in self-confidence that end up going to be elite athletes, right? And I believe that that is that is built into them. But I, I still don't believe that if you don't have it, you can't. Yeah. You can't have it. Yeah. Um, I don't have huge amounts of self-confidence. I was going to ask you that. Um, despite what it might look like, this is you know everyone's the same, right? They put on a front, but. Yeah. I think that's what held me back in my career. I, I, I know that I had more talent, if that's even a thing, or more ability to, to make it higher than what I did. But I didn't perform at certain times that I should have because I doubted myself. Right. Um, and, and so, yeah, I, I was able to perform in front of, you know, 10, 15,000 people 
fine um, at certain times and then others I wouldn't perform as well as I could have. And that was just because that doubt crept in. Um, and I think one of the things that's really, really tough um, that I found tough being a business owner is that no one tells you really you're doing well, you're doing this, you're doing that. <laughs> that's right. I, f- I found that really tough. And, and especially as being a, in a team sport where I have a manager, the instant feedback that I was getting yeah. on my own performance, yeah. even though I didn't really know, need to be told, you know, I, was, I knew if I'd played well or not. But, you know, instant, even from the crowd, yeah. you know, they'll cheer you if you do something good or they'll boo, you, boo yeah. you if you do something bad. You get that instant feedback on yeah. your performance. As a business owner, you get nothing. <laughs> You really do. Though. It's you true. Nothing. It's very true. How do you know that you're doing a good job? Yeah, it's only on your own self-assessment. Do you know if you're doing you're doing well? Or your P and L, your P and L, or your you know you get feedback and testimonials and stuff. But I, I, um, yeah, I struggle with that. The trouble is, it drives. If you have any insecurity, it, it amplifies it. Yeah, you know those quiet moments when yeah. you know, and as in some ways, I don't know if this is true for you. I find. And maybe maybe you're more capable of dealing with it given your football history, the adrenaline cycle. Mm. So if I'm shooting, you know, let's say ten shoots a week when we're when we're running at full tilt, yeah. then I have almost two lives. I have the real life, yeah. which is running a business, being a dad, being a husband, trying to be good at any of those things, and I, I suspect I'm rubbish at all of it. And then being a photographer and I have to walk into a room, maybe having had a row or just found out that <sighs> Something's gone wrong, or something's yeah. broken. I'm going to have to, you know, I've got to work this out. Yeah. Then I walk into a room, or as I did on Saturday, walk in front of a hundred people. Yeah. And be the photographer they've paid for. Totally. They've paid for that performance. They mm. know what I'm like. They're mm. expecting me to not only be the same as I was at other events they've seen, but to be the best. Yeah. Because that's what you do, right? Yeah. You stand yeah. on a ladder, and a hundred people, you've got to hold them captive yeah. for enough time to get whatever job it is you're trying to get done you know a big group shot or you're trying to take intimate shots whatever it is and then you switch off at the end of the day and you drive home and all the insecurity comes flooding back yeah. alongside the sudden depletion of adrenaline yeah. so I'm now tired right, right. <laughs> I've now got no adrenaline and I'm now starting to think about all the crap that I've got to deal with yeah. and I find that cyclical nature yeah. I can deal with it for a very long time and then suddenly I break yeah and I, and I did earlier, about, you know, about a week ago, I got to the point where it's like, enough. Wow. I'm done. Not, not done, not it's over, not no, that. It's just, just, I need to stop. And I have these odd days where I just can't. I don't, just don't do anything, yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of, yeah, it's a really weird day where it's not that I rest. It's almost like I just kind of disappear into a cave for a day. Yeah. <laughs> and, then I, and then I feel guilty because my to-do list is every day. Yeah, as long yeah, as it yeah. Was, the guilt, the guilt is, yeah. was a real thing, I think. But do you, I mean, you're someone who's into fitness and knows about, is, am I right in thinking that adrenaline yeah, cycling is, is tiring? Yeah, hugely. It was definitely worse as a professional footballer, soccer player, um, because you cannot, you cannot replicate that buzz of playing in front of those people. Yeah. Um, and that is, a, that, is a, that is a real, real thing. You know? But you still, I was going to, that's actually a question on here, which is all about um, having walked out onto pitches with 10 or 15,000 people mm. chanting if not your name the team name yeah now you if you're lucky you'll get 15 people yeah it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. quite a big difference yeah it's no it's not it's totally I get a totally different feeling from I I, I wouldn't say it's like a, a adrenaline spike teaching a class but I get a huge amount of satisfaction satisfaction out yeah. of it and seeing people work hard and the energy that brings is more satisfying, I would say, than anything else. But it's not, I wouldn't say it's a rush of adrenaline. I, I think what you experience is probably more than what I experience because it is that, yeah, it's I'm, quite an intense I'm probably thing, in between say. the two, I think. Yeah, I in think between your football right. world, yeah, yeah, yeah. soccer world, and in yeah. between your current gym world. I yeah. probably sit somewhere yeah, in between I, those I, two. Yeah. yeah, so I would say I don't get the crashes that you get in adrenaline anymore but I've experienced that and I know exactly what you mean um, well it's always it makes me very emotional and it does I'm already quite an emotional guy this yeah. is, and that's quite common I think with photographers <laughs> I experience it sometimes when I do these you know like fitness events yeah. or challenges or marathons yeah. and stuff and I do experience that yeah, the where I've cried after yeah, yeah. completing it um, so I know exactly what you mean it is a real thing yeah 
And it's interesting yeah. that you, you experienced that. Yeah, and I, and I thought for, for a long time it was just me, but more and more I've talked, particularly because I spoke, speak mostly to photographers and business yeah. owners in that world. Yeah, the, the ability to, to kind of <laughs> self-annihilate, really. You just... Do you have any um, other hobbies? Because like, I know you've really got into the gym now, and does that help you deal with that? Do you yes. Think? Yes, but possibly not in the ways that you might think. Um, so I met mean, as a child, uh, I dealt with these kinds of feelings by having a, I was a drummer. Yeah. Um, and I had the most ridiculously tolerant neighbours. Because <laughs> yeah. those days, it was before electronic kits were invented, you know, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. massive drum kit. Yeah. And I would batter hell out of it for an hour and a half ago. Yeah. Literally until sweat poured off me and I couldn't hold the sticks. And I do that yeah. almost every day. God bless my neighbours. Wow. I saw them again recently. They still like me. I don't know. Well, <laughs> my, he was a keyboard player. must have been good. Well, my neighbour was a keyboard player. <laughs> so he kind of, he understood yeah. So he let me do it. Yeah. You know, but God knows. So that was the kind of escape. Right? That was my escape. So, right. so the the you know just the sweat and the heart rate up for an hour and a half, and I find that in the gym. I, okay. I went last night. I've had to. T- I've, I've not been for six weeks. Right. Because our workload spiked, and yeah. we were away for a couple of weeks. So two yeah. weeks run in. Yeah. Massive workload. Couldn't find the time. Two yeah. weeks on holiday. Yeah. That was okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then two weeks coming back, and oh, massive spike because of course all of the work I wasn't it's doing yeah. was caught up. So this week, it's everything's calmed down, and okay. I'm, yeah, I'm back on the back in the gym, which felt a little bit weird because it's hard starting again, isn't it? Oh, really hard. You know, and trying to remember if I got everything I need. Oh yeah. shit, I forgot my pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All the kind of rubbish <laughs> that that you do. And now I felt, I, and I'm back on it. I loved it. Just yeah. an hour, an hour and a bit of me and trying to keep my heart rate up. So yes, you, you in that sense, that really helps. Mm. Um, but it's not about but you don't drum this, anymore. This is about podcast is about you. You don't drum anymore. Uh, I'm trying to figure that out. I, we do have an electronic kit at home because right, yeah. clearly, round here, if I put my acoustic kit up, we would have complaints. Yeah, you would. Yeah, <laughs> if you've read Haddenham.net, <laughs> yeah, don't make too much noise around there. Uh, the neighbours had a party the night, and Haddenham.net was alive oh, and kicking. Brilliant! I love that thing. <laughs> so uh, I have an electronic kit, but at the moment, it's it's buried at the back of our old studio, and I'm trying to figure out a way of getting it down here so that in those moments when I'm cross. I can stick a pair of cans on and batter. The, the thing for me is golf. Is it? Yeah, it's weird. Um, well, it's not weird. I love it, but it's uh, so. This is the thing that got me. Part that first, when I said I had that mini breakdown yeah. after six months, yeah. I didn't play any golf, so I didn't have time. Yeah, um, I was working seven days a week, all, all hours in the gym, and um, Jess was just like, "You need to play golf." She was the one that called it. She said, "Go and join the Oxfordshire." Well, I have some mates that yeah. play there. And it was just the best thing. Just like Did you play before then? Yeah. All right. I'm a really keen golfer. Right. But obviously but that just I got I bet you're a good apps. golfer as well. Annoying. Yeah, I'm all right. And uh, that just got absolutely squashed when yeah. I set up Fit Life. Yeah. Because, you know, everything just went, everything, every ounce of me went into that. And um, golf takes a long time. Yeah. So it's four hours yeah. of walking around, fresh air. Yeah. playing the sport that I'm, yeah. I'm not fresh thinking Fresh air at the Oxford it's windy. Yeah, it's windy. always windy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and just... Um, just that that is when I really switch off because right you experience this as well you you own a business with your wife yeah okay so even when you try not to talk about the business it ends up creeping into conversation yeah. of course it is so that that again was suffocating because you'd go home and talk about it yeah um, did you just as an aside did you find or do you find you talk disproportionately about the things that have gone wrong to the things that have gone well oh yeah, <laughs> like, typical, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, you very briefly mention the things that have gone. Yeah, well. that's right. And then you yeah. spend an hour discussing one tricky client or one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, broken. Something. Absolutely. Yeah, that is what happens. Um, and we, we, I don't think I've really sat back and kind of reflected on what we've achieved, which is stupid because is. if three years ago I told myself that we'd have six hundred members, yeah, and you know we'd won, we've won an award, yeah. And um, you know, thing people say really nice things about us. I'd, I'd yeah. say you're mad, but yeah. when you when we've achieved that, and that's what we're doing. And, yeah. and but I think as as an owner, and as maybe you know, if you look around what you've got here now, you know, behind you, you've got this film playing of all your clients and stuff. However, all those years ago when you I met you at Tom Butler's fiftieth, yeah. 
This well, was what you dreamed of, right? Well, there's, a, there's an aside to that. It's a funny story. Well, I don't know if it's funny, but it's a story. Uh, so after I'd done Tom Butler's 50th, yeah. and I'd done a couple more shoots for the family, because you know, my people on the podcast won't know this, he's a, he's a, a, was a property developer, or is a property yeah. developer, a very successful businessman, yeah. and a really nice guy. And mm, I like the fact that he was guy, a very yeah. successful, but beautiful human being. I liked that mix. And so I asked him if I could spend an hour just chatting about my dreams, because this is we're going back to 2005. Oh, so 14 years ago, and sat down with him in his kitchen. And I like the fact that I went to his kitchen and he said, do you want a drink, Paul? And I said, oh yeah, I'll have a, have a drink. Thinking tea or coffee. And he opened the fridge and he said, what type of champagne do you like? Because they got yeah. this, he had a fridge full of champagne. champagne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Tom, like water I like Tom no, no, I'd yeah. like a cup of tea, please. Yeah. I, you know, you're someone I truly admire. I'm not sitting yeah. on my first proper, you know, <laughs> business type meeting with you yeah. drinking champagne. You drink away, but I'm not. And obviously we had, you know, a long session and I, and I, was, I still work with the family and you know, Tara and the, and the kids and Bridge were in there last week for a shoot you know yeah. it's just I'm still very much part of that mix but he came in here when we opened the studio and it must have been about a year in I think when we opened the studio and I said to Tom you know some, I can't remember what I said something about what we do next and you know here we are and he turned to me and he's laughing his head off and I'm like what's up Tom and he said do you not remember the conversation we had back then? I said, well, yeah, you know, you were a big influence. So yes, I remember quite a lot of what we spoke about. And he said, well, I asked you, what was your dream? What were you dreaming about? And, uh, you know, you'd obviously given your story. And he said, this is it. Yeah. <laughs> this is almost to the colour of the walls yeah. what you described when I asked you, what's your dream? You've achieved it. Yeah. And of course, in my head, I'm thinking, what do I do next? Yeah, that's it. But I've just, I've done everything. I did everything in those 10 years that I'd said that I wanted to do. And here I am still as ambitious as ever trying to figure out what we do next. Exactly. And that's the exact situation I am. And it's funny you say how influential he is because he was the most influential person yeah. in Open and Fit Life because I didn't know how to do any of the property stuff. Yeah. You saw the state yeah, of that yeah. building, right? And he did it all. Yeah. He was amazing. And um, so yeah, he's a good man to both of us. Yeah, he's a, he's a it's, and this goes back a little bit to finding inputs. Oh, it's just, yeah, it's yeah. crucial. It, well, it is, and sometimes it's parents, and sometimes it's, you know, you Sarah here now is our biggest input by far. Right. You know, level head. She's mm. not emotional in the way that I am. Mm. You know, she is emotional about things, but not, you know the photography she doesn't have those creative cycles that I do and so she's the level head she's the bit that keeps me grounded and she's amazing for steady state mm -hmm. and then what we need to do is spike it yeah. with an external voice yeah. that maybe just helps us make the dream you know draw that picture that's the next step Yeah. but all of those bits fit together and Tom's such a I think it's the fact that you just, because he's been so successful and because he's so well loved, mm. you're kind of drawn towards him. Yeah, I think you're right. I think, I think getting people that like that to help you out yeah. is, is massive. Um, yeah, and he would say the same to me. Uh, yeah. Like, you know, if I was to say to him now, so, right, what's next? He'd probably laugh and say, this is what you dreamed of. It is. Yeah, I can see that but I was going to ask you what's next <laughs> well I, I, I like I said I, I I've never felt more alive than setting up that gym it was just the most stressful but fun time yeah. I've ever had and I would love to do it all again with everything that I've learned yeah. from this one and we have been looking at properties and we have been out there assessing locations and would it work would it not work and um you know, if one, if, if, if someone came, somewhere came up that was perfect, I think I'd be hard to not go for it. But it does, I don't know, it's, it's something that I'm not forcing because I don't want it to jeopardise what we have yeah. in Haddam. It's so special, like you said. Um, and I love it. Every day I love it. And I think if we open another one, it would, it would spread that a bit thin. And I say, how do you replicate you? Well, that's a problem, isn't it? I mean, the thing that I want it to be the brand. I don't want Fit Life to be me, and it's yeah. difficult. Yeah. Um, and I think it's slowly getting more and more towards that. I wouldn't say that everyone that hears Fit Life would think of me anymore, but 
um, I just, yeah, I don't know. I, what is next? It's a good question. I talk about it to Jess all the time, obviously, like you would with Sarah, but, you know, pe- I've been approached the franchise already. It's not, definitely not the right time for that. Yeah. Um, partnerships, maybe, on, another, oh. on the second thing. Because I, I, I think what we've got there is really special, and I would love for other people to experience it in a different location yeah. rather than just having them. Um, and that's my drive behind it. It's not just because I want to have yeah. multiple sites because I can say I can have multiple sites. I want people to experience what we do. Yeah. Um, that's tough though, given the very ethos that you set the gym up with was yeah. to fight back against the global. Yeah, yeah, the, totally. The and and they're, they're opening willy nilly, you know, yeah. like all over the country. Those those types of big um, franchises or um, you know heavily financed places, but. Yeah, I think it is hard and it is a challenge because all of my energy went into this one. And yeah. if I were to open another one, I would not be able to apply that same energy again. Yeah. Because I've, st- I've got this one to still. Well, you, but equally, you ba- you'll be building a new one on a, with a lot more experience. Yeah, totally. I could do it a lot easier than what I did. I made a lot of mistakes. Um, what was the worst mistake? Thankfully not. Well, I definitely over <laughs> I overfilled the gym, right? So I, I spent far too much money on, on kit initially. Right. And I would sub out some of that kit for some something else yeah. in a heartbeat. So, I, I, I what's the I, lifespan of kit? Mm, depends what it is. Five. five so you're coming up. You st- yeah, to start thinking a few about years something. away. Yeah. We could change it now, but um, yeah, I'd wait a couple more years really. Get get more more of my money's worth. But yeah, we overstocked it. Um, I think that's. I, but I do think it's part of its charm. <laughs> it can yeah, get a little, full, isn't it? It can right? get a little bit tight in there sometimes, but you know. It's but what I'm saying is, I wouldn't. I, it's not that I wouldn't have the kit. That I just think that I put too much kit in there to start with. We had 150 members, and it's got the same kit as it has now at 600. Yeah. What I should have done is put three quarters of the kit that's in there now from the start yeah. and added to it yeah. as we went along. Because there's there's always new stuff coming out. Yeah. There's always innovations in the fitness industry every year there's something new and exciting that comes out and we don't have any room for it yeah which is really frustrating for me because i want to i want to be the one the first gym to have this or the first gym to have that and we don't have any room for it which is really frustrating we've run out of room um is the biggest headache that i have now um i approached the library i got laughed out of there yeah i'm sure you were um (laughs) Yeah, so looking, if I could expand that place, yeah. I'd be a lot happier. Yeah, it's just uh, at peak times, you know what it's like. It was bursting at the seams, really, and that's frustrating yeah. for me because um, six hundred members is more than I thought we'd yeah. ever have, and yet I still think there's more people out there that would benefit from us. Yeah, um, and you know whether we can accommodate them, I don't know. Yeah, I have to say I time my visits to the gym. Yeah, you come later on when it's quiet. Either later on or June. There's a there's a there's a lull at about nine thirty in the morning. It gets yeah. a little bit quieter. Yeah, um, but you know, on a Monday, Tuesday night, which most gyms have that problem. Yeah. Um, but we are limited on space, and we've used every inch of that place. There's yeah, no yeah. there's no extra room. <laughs> so, uh, what is next, Paul? I don't know. It's something that I need to figure out because that's probably what I'm finding the most stressful now. Is that okay, I'm still trying to improve on what we offer in Haddenham. But the fulfillment of me as a businessman, you know, if I just rest on those laurels and say, all right, yeah. this is it now, I've achieved everything and I'll just keep these, yeah. this thing ticking over, I just know that it won't fulfill me. It's tough though. You've got to somehow do more without diluting. Mm-hmm. Really tough. tough ask. It's tough. I mean, we have the same problem. I... I it's yeah. people. I have to put a lot of trust in other people yeah. to do it for but you've me. Had a, I mean, I think, I mean, I, could, I can't comment on, you know, your, your staff in, in, that I don't employ them, but I know as a front of house interface and the people I talk to, and obviously the people I've photographed, you have a pretty good selection process. I have met yeah, yeah, some yeah. of the nicest it's, people. It's, um, it's, it's definitely one of the biggest challenges, but we've, we've been very, very lucky with you think um, it's luck or do you think you're just drawing nice people towards you maybe that maybe that maybe we've i think we have created a nice environment to work in yeah. definitely and and we do look after them and um 
they buy into what we do, which is yeah. the most important thing. Um, we've had a couple of bad ones, but they soon, you know, get swept away because yeah. they have to, because they're, um, you know, not the right fit. But yeah, the ones that work, you have to really hold on to. You know, like you've got here with Michelle. Yeah. She works great for you. And yeah. you have to just find ways of making them happy. Yeah. Um, and making them as passionate or half as passionate as what you can be about your business. Yeah, I don't think anyone can quite no, be as there's, passionate. There's no way. Can. There's no way. But it's that is the way to do it, is just finding the right people. And and we have. And, and most of it is all done by word of mouth. We haven't used any kind of recruitment process, really. Um, it's mainly done by, oh, do you know anyone? Yeah. Which is the beauty of this area, is that people... It's, yeah, it is an amazing, you know, we have this a small village mentality, but with quite a large headcount in yeah. this village. Yeah, we do. I hope the new house, the new house, see, I mean, you know, as a, as a business owner here in Haddenham, you know, for people listening to the podcast, we've just, well, just say just, we're in the middle of an expansion program that was forced on the village. Yeah. Which is what, six, seven hundred homes or something yeah. ridiculous. I mean, it's a huge expansion. It's almost doubling the size of the village. Yeah. yeah. And there's, you know, I was like most villages very anti that. I've fought it. I've put my name on petitions and everything else, as you do, because yeah. I like the village. Yeah. But then there's the flip side of that as a small business owner in this village. Well, that's 600 new clients. Exactly. <laughs> you kind of, you have to, like, I mean, it's a very British thing. We're going to look on the bright side. Yeah. You know, in the houses. I mean, I, I'm fairly happy, but then I've got a problem of accommodating them. If yeah. I suddenly get a hundred new people that want to join, like What's I said, your, what kind of attrition, a churn rate do you get in a gym? What do you mean? Well, I mean, people joining is one end of the metric; people leaving is the other end. Well, of we're the kind metric. of plateauing a little bit now. So we've we've literally from the moment we open, we've been rising and rising, yeah. and now it's about the same. Right. So we would have. I can tell you now, this month, there's 16 members that have left. Right. But last month was a good month for us. We had 37 new joiners. Right. Um, and, and you but it's usually about, yes, yeah, it's, it's usually roughly 15 to 20 yeah. levers. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we've been, we've been steadily around 25, 30 new members okay. a month. And do you, do you think, I mean, you, you spoke about the gyms probably, you know, a little bit small for the number of members you have. Do you think that would create the natural attrition? Because you can't keep growing and growing and growing. That's yeah, point. that will be natural. And if we natural, did nothing because- now, I think we'd just sit around 600 members. Yeah. I think we've, and also we haven't advertised. Yeah. We did a little bit of Facebook marketing about a year ago right. when I had a panic because we had this <laughs> like, I mean, in the summer is a, is a dip in gyms, yeah. right? Uh, people go away, yeah. uh, people go outside for runs, cycles, whatever. And uh, yeah, I had a bit of a, a panic last year. So <laughs> this time last year, actually, we had a few more leave and it was the first month ever that we had lost more members than we took on. Right. So I went, oh my God. Yeah. So Facebook marketing, it was quite good. It picked us back up. But I, that was pretty much the only money I've ever spent on marketing. Right. And it's all been word of mouth, but yeah. we've exhausted that now. I don't think we could do, if we wanted to attract another 100 members, I'd have to spend money on doing that. If you attracted another 100 members, you'd probably drive other members away. Yeah because the gym now would be beyond its capacity. Yeah, I think, yeah, the issue is, is the classes. So we've got waiting lists on most yeah. of them. Um, you know, we've added a few more, but at the end of the day, people only want to train at certain times a day. Yeah. You know, you're lucky you've got, yeah. you've got your own business, so you could sneak out there. Yeah, that theoretical um, freedom again. Theoretical freedom. <laughs> but at the end of the day, people either want to train before work or after work. So you've only got a certain amount of times yeah. that you can put classes on. And that is, that is a big headache, big headache. Um, we've got we've got consultation rooms next to us so we've got physio rooms um, that are bolted on to the side of our gym which we could convert into another studio that's the only way really that we could expand where we are yeah. is uh, is putting another and it replicates the exact same footprint so we would have two studios yeah. and run classes alongside each other which would be cool to do um and maybe we will look at doing that. But I, I have got a quote for doing it and it's it's quite a lot of money. It's quite a big investment. You need to make sure that you get that back yeah. in new members. So it might be something we look at doing a year down the line or something. Um, but yeah, you're right. I think I think now we're at that, that top yeah. of the curve where we're not going to bring any more in 
naturally. Yeah. We're no longer the new gym. Um, we are just the gym in the village that people go to. So You've done well though, given that the last gym failed magnificently, didn't it? Yeah. It was a catastrophic failure. But you need to, you need to put money into these things, you know. I don't think. Do you think you it's can... money? Or do you need to put personality into it? I mean, I'm not. I'm not yeah, disputing. I, you need to put money in. I don't know the guy that had it before, but I, I I've not heard great things, and um, I saw what it was like, and it wouldn't be somewhere that I would have picked to train. Yeah. Which is what honestly, it's why that I thought this area needed it. Um, there wasn't, and this is no disrespect to other gyms in the area because they're popular and they're they're well used, but there was no gym in this area that I wanted to train at. Yeah. And that's categorically why I set it up because I thought, well, I can't be the only one that's thinking this. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I think a huge amount of your success, I think you have a cool brand. I think you have a cool space. Most importantly, you and Jess are hugely popular and you started that. You probably filled it with a hundred friends to start with. Mm. And those hundred friends talk to other people. Well, the boot camp is what really started it. And that people will only come back to those things if they like you. Yeah. Because it's yeah. that's what they come for. Yeah. Um and we had 150 boot campers really. Yeah. paying us money before we even opened. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think that that kickstarted it for, yeah. for sure. And then yeah, and then and then the ball started rolling from there. So it's an interesting parallel again, generally drawing it back to photography. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> totally dissimilar because I think from a you know, if I was looking for a photographer, you could go and look at websites and you can look at Instagram or Facebook and you can see images. And they're obviously going to put their best images up there, right? So you're going to see a lot of good photography on those platforms. But you need to have a connection with that yeah. person. You're inviting them into your wedding day or your family or... And there has to be... It's an experience. Yeah, you're not just selling photographs. I mean, that is what you do. But you're, you're not selling. Just selling you're, you're not just selling fitness. No, I'm not. I'm not just selling someone. I wish I could guarantee them and lose a stone <laughs> and wait. I'd be a rich man. But yeah, you would be. I mean, that's that's why they join. A lot of people is they want to lose weight. But to keep them coming and keep them inspired, you have to give them an experience. Yeah. And that's that's what you're trying to package up yeah, as well. Yeah. You know. But also your startup process is you started with a field. Now you yeah. were lucky. You owned a field. Yeah, and yeah, and you put people in it every week and yeah. they loved it. Yeah. And then you found a building and yeah. you built the brand and you built... And that's so, so, so similar to how you start any kind of small business like photography as well. Yeah. I started with a camera and a yeah. smile. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then only when I'd got enough clients did I put any kind of buildings. And even then it was a small studio already. I converted our old big garage as it was into a studio at home Yeah, and then did the next thing. And you kind of keep doing that. You build it on what you have, don't you? You build it on but the I, I, I'm quite inspired by you, Paul, because you've, what you've done is you have this here in Haddenham, but you're known everywhere. <laughs> yeah, well, it's and, it's and I'm loud. Yeah, but you've done, you've written books, you know what I mean? So yeah. I, and this is something I've been looking into how we can expand okay, yeah, we have this gym that works perfectly yeah. well in this area. But there's loads of different platforms that we can utilise to... Yeah. Oh, a book. I don't know if many people would read a book in, the, in our industry, Paul. <laughs> but, you know, like, even I, like podcasts. It's yeah, I love I the podcast. We've got some super, super inspirational members that have had yeah. incredible stories. And I think a lot of the fitness stuff that I listen to, health and fitness, is based on elite or, yeah. you know, like... People that are already completely ripped or... Well, I'll, t I'll tell you a story back at you. And it's about you and your clients. So it's, it's on point. Mm. Is And I've just written a tag for their frame because they came here for a photo shoot. It's Mark and his family. Mm. So I photographed for you, Mark, yeah. in the gym. And he told me his story. Yeah. And I'm not going to give out all the personal details. I don't think that's fair. But what he had done was told himself... I'm going to get my weight down and I'm going to get fit mm -hmm. for a million reasons. And I understood those reasons. They were very personal to him and his family. And he did it. And when I photographed him, he looked amazing. And he's still on that program. And I photographed him again since. And he looks even better. Mm -hmm. He is quite a funny guy. Yeah. So he kept pestering me to find out when his photo was going up on the wall, yeah, yeah, <laughs> which yeah, I think yeah. is hilarious. Yeah. But actually, the reason I then came to you and said, right, Steve, I now need to get myself back into shape mm -hmm. was because he 
Yeah, exactly. He was inspiring. Yeah. More inspiring than me listening to an elite athlete, more inspiring oh, than me totally. listening to a footballer. Yeah. Because he's a lovely guy and he managed to change his whole mental game to go every... He's there pretty much every day, I think, isn't he? He's yeah, not he is, far yeah. off. Mm. And he looked fantastic and he looked happy and he described and showed me a picture of what he used to be like. And I would not have recognised him. Mind-blowing, yeah. He's yeah, and, it was, and he's... A, Actually, he's someone I probably should get on. I'll beat you too. I'll get him on. Yeah. No, you get him on your podcast. Set up a podcast and interview. Because <laughs> yeah. he's amazing and he's lovely. And I found that one of the most inspiring stories Definitely. I'd ever... So Honestly, it's... Um, you know, for all of the stuff that... The stresses and the worries about business. You know, you take someone like that. That, you know, yeah. he, he came to Fit Life. And... Uh, Let's be honest, like he, he was going for an early grave, like yeah. where the, the route he was taking. And like it's completely transformed his life. Whether yeah. whether he would do that at another gym, I don't know. We were the lucky ones that he walked into. Yeah. And like you can't put a price on that. No. And we've got we've got quite a few members like that. It'd be um, great. It'd be a great podcast. Yeah, and, and just because it that is what inspires other people. It's yeah. relatable for, right. for people in a similar position. Um and it's a bit of a criticism that I put on myself because I want I want people to know about these things, but you also don't want to force it upon the person that's gone through that. To, yeah, you know, it's that it's trying to find the line between I want to use you as promotion for my yeah. gym and then also respecting his privacy. And yes, because there, there is a story there. Yeah, but he's such. I just honestly, I, I was properly, you know, it was in one shoot. I photographed him, and then I pho- photographed Anne, of course. Oh, Anne is just, <laughs> yeah. Again, she is. Um, Describe her. So Anne is late seventies. Um, she's got severe scoliosis. Now, scoliosis is curvature of the spine. Yeah. Um, and everyone's got a natural curve, but it will go laterally yeah. rather than um, flexion. But. She is just one of the sweetest ladies yeah. that I've ever met. She's um, she comes to the gym. So this is actually another another point in my mind that um, I'll always I'll always keep. So we were a week away from opening. We had this big pre pre launch on memberships, and this email dropped into my inbox. So every time someone signed up, I would get an email notification that someone had joined on a royalty membership, which is um, a personal training session every week included yeah. and paid up a year in advance. Okay. So it was 1800 quid. We're not even open yet. This, I don't know who this Anne is, right? I won't say her surname. And I said to Jess, this has got to be a mistake because I saw her age and I thought, oh God, someone's made a mistake here. They've sent this money. We're going to have to send it back. And she walked in on the first day of opening and introduced herself. And um, she had basically got to the point of giving up. She was in a lot of pain. She was struggling to sleep. She was seeing chiropractors and NHS physios and stuff yeah. who, were, who would manually treat her and then send her away. And the pain would be okay for two hours and revert straight back. So she had just got to the point where she had to do something. She lives around the corner from the gym. Saw the gym's opening, went for the best package she could possibly do, invested in it, said, this is what I'm going to do. And here we are nearly three years later. She's coming in four times a week. She's like everyone's favorite person in the gym. She's a huge character. Uh, everyone knows her because we would put, I, I would, with her permission, of course, put, put a um, video up of her session. She does incredible things, yeah. things that, people my age wouldn't be able to do now. Yeah. and don't get me wrong she still has her days of pain yeah. her scoliosis is not fixed but she's living a much happier life she's able to sleep at night she's able to her, her um, daughter lives in London she can walk around London with her grandkids and it's things like that you know our mantra is feel fit love life yeah. and that is that is it to a T she was suffering silently in a lot of pain for so many years and all she really needed was some movement in her life yeah. to help her function. And that, she's, she's one of my favourite members for sure. And, and mine. And yeah. one of the most favourite people I've ever photographed. Yeah. And I, I spent... That photo I, that you took is honestly, it, every time I look at it, it just well, mel- I was in the, melts I went to the gym last night and uh, Tyler's on the front desk uh, last night. And I was laughing about the photos. And even Tyler, she just, 
she just points at Anne on the wall. And oh, goes, That's the one. You it's know, just it's just beautiful. Yeah. It's a beautiful image. Of a, of a, but she's beautiful. I mean, the, it's the image. Um, you know, I take some credit for that. It's not. It's it's well executed, but it's actually her. It's her. She has something about her. Yeah, that's just, but you captured it perfectly. The way she sat. She's got that glint in her it's eye. It's the glint in the eye. Yeah. yeah. It's just an amazing character. It is. <laughs> uh, so you set the gym up. Uh, we're kind of closing out some interview. I don't want to get to the end of the podcast and not talk a little bit more about Jess's role. Yeah. Because like so many small businesses, it's a husband and wife team, certainly who put it together. Yeah. And whether you like it or not, now living with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I know Jess has gone back to being a teacher. She it? will be in September, yeah. No, because she's a pretty, I mean, Jess is a spectacularly special lady. Mm. You know, not only is she beautiful, but she's ridiculously smart too. Mm. And mm. works with uh, kids with learning difficulties, yeah. I think. Autism, yeah. Autism. Um, and so basically Jess is your average angel <laughs> no, she is she really is I, I mean I find it quite hard that you meet someone like you who's so everyone's so drawn to you and yet somehow you're quietly going to be outshone yeah, by, your, by your beautiful wife yeah. and undoubtedly by your son who will grow to be taller yeah. more talented and, because that's yes, what the kids do to you isn't it um, but when you said when you announced you were going to do this set this gym up mm. what was that like what were those conversations like well, she was, she was never, she never intended to be a part of it. She right. absolutely loved her job. Yeah. Um, like I said, she, she was a, a teacher for special needs and autism. She honestly loved it to bits. And uh, Prince was a primary, so super handy. And the kind of, the gym just, I, I've got a lot of, I've got strengths, but I've got a lot of weaknesses. My organisation skills are appalling, <laughs> absolutely appalling, which is a massive part of running a business. You have to be organised. And Jess is the most organised person I know. And I was always going to have to employ someone with that, that skill set to basically manage me as much yeah. as the business. And I, it, we were actually on a honeymoon when we decided to that she was going to help me with it because you know we were discuss I was discussing it passionately as I do and saying I was actually talking about trying to get her friend Polly on board I don't think you know but she um, is in the industry and you know was quite keen and then Jess just kind of said I want to do it literally just like that I want to do it which blew me away because she loved what she did completely but she saw the passion and she saw the energy that I had. And she loves the industry as well. She loves um, health and fitness. But for her to do that for my dream is just like, I can never repay her for that. And the job that she's done is huge. Yeah. Like colossal, you know. And, and it would be nowhere near what it is now without her. Absolutely nowhere near. She, I've, I am, I'm Mr. Optimist, you know. I'm like, I want to do that, I want to do that. Let's do this, let's do that. And she's really the only one that will tell me no, or that's not a good idea. Let's not do that. Let's focus just on doing this, which you need. You need that direction. Now yeah. you're all over the place. Yeah. And um, she's just been, yeah, she's just been outstanding. So for her to do that, and, and now she's, we're lucky, you know, the, the gym is, it's got good people in it. It's running. It's not running itself, of course. That's not, not something that ever <laughs> happens. But you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's allowing... She's taken nine months away from it. And now she can go back to her teaching, which is amazing. Um, and I don't think she'll ever come back permanently to fit life now. She'll always play a massive part. She's a director, of course. But she's done her bit, which I can't thank her enough for. And... Yeah, thankfully we're both we're both getting the rewards from it now because it's a business that we absolutely love, yeah. and we still talk about it every single day. <laughs> you can't avoid it, can um, you? But it's actually nice to not have her there um, constantly have because some separation. yeah, because now we do have we do can separate the family time to the yeah. business time, um, and I loved going to work with her every day. It was so much fun, but it is now like a, it's a slightly different chapter now where we've got Ezra. And she's mummy, was, and I'm she daddy. Was beautiful. Yeah, and um, and again, we're very lucky to have him. But it's it, it would be it would be really challenging to have her back and put him into childcare to yeah to balance that off. I think we'd suffer a little bit. Um, so it's all worked out very well. And yeah, like I said, she's been just a huge, huge influence on the whole whole thing. 
Yes, I would agree with you. It's, it's, it's always <laughs> when we when we need to get you organised. It's always Jess we spoke to. When yeah. We need, when we needed to get inspired, well, in my case, fit. It was always you I spoke to. Um, yeah, get, but, and that they, is it. I mean, it's she's she's misorganised and I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, it's closing question. I'm, I'm, uh, as people who regularly listen to podcasts will know, I'm building this virtual library. As, well, it's, oh, a yeah. very, it's a very real library. That's cool. Uh, I'm ordering the books. So people recommend books and I'm ordering them and we're building this photographers or books that would just be of interest to a photographer. Yeah. Some of them trivial, some of them quite profound. Uh, how, is there a book that you think would be an the interesting one, The one that um, changed a lot for me was Simon Sinek and it's called Start With Why. Okay. Um, now he's quite famous for TED Talks and... Uh, oh, a lot of media stuff, yeah. I, I've watched some of his talks. Uh, so one of the, the most watched TED Talk is Start With Why, but he's, he started with a book, which I read, and it's um, it's quite heavily based on Apple, actually. It takes mm. a lot of inspiration from, from that, but it's um, successful businesses. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Yeah. And that's the whole method of it. And it's a massive thing that I took into Fit Life was not, we are a gym, but it's like, why are we a gym? Yeah. Why are we doing what we're doing? And um, it's something that I come back to a lot. It's something that I, I should reread probably now because like I said, I'm at this point where I'm struggling a little bit with understanding next steps and yeah. stuff like that. Um, but it's a really, really interesting read. And I think it's one that you should definitely have in your library. I will order it and I will put the link on the footnotes below. Yeah. And I actually went to watch him live. Uh, he, he, he also did this, uh, went viral, this chat on millennials. I saw it. How I watched to, yeah. it. I watched so he's quite well known for that. But the, the book is, is outstanding. Um, and I've spoke to a few business owners that have said the same thing. And that's kind of a, a great one to read to understand your yeah. business a little bit better and why you do things. Brilliant. I will add that and I'll add a link. Um, I am sure Amazon have plenty of new copies and second-hand copies. Yep. You know. I love Amazon for this. I, I mean, it's I'm, good. Our book's for sale on Amazon, so I'm constantly griping about Amazon because they sell my book at sometimes full price and other times just a ridiculously... It's, they can sell it cheaper than I can buy it from our wholesaler, which really? does my head in. Uh, yeah, they do. And they flex the price all the time because for the first time ever, I own a book on Amazon or I've created a book That's on incredible. Amazon. incredible. You must and be we so actually, proud of that. We actually watch the price fluctuation. We can actually watch their marketing strategy. It's quite funny. Um, so it frustrates the hell out of me. But on the other hand, I've been buying books where the postage has cost me more than the book because the yeah. second-hand book is just as full of information as the new version. Yeah, uh, But I can get it for, you know, the book's a pound and the postage is three quid. Yeah. And so I quite like that. There's a thriving second-hand yeah. market. Yeah, well, there. even if people don't read the book, they should definitely watch the TED Talk because yeah. it's super inspirational. That, that talk on the millennials was fascinating mm. and slightly scary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have to be honest. Uh, well, but, that's another thing that we've had to deal with is that our industry is quite a young, yeah. young industry. People that work in it are t- tend to be young. Yeah. And they do fall into that millennial category. So yeah. it did resonate with me yeah. is how you inspire these people to do good jobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know, I can speak for the guys who I've interacted with, uh, you know, we've got you know, Lawrence and Harriet and Lucy and Emma and Iona, of course, is a yeah. fantastic trainer who sadly is moving on and Tyler, who I have all the time in the world for. She's and, great. Yeah, she's just fantastic. We're losing her. Uh, yes, no. I but no, she's, she's been amazing. Tyler's been amazing. She's... Um, I'm really happy for her because she's doing what she absolutely loves. Absolutely. She, she was always going to be a musician and a dancer yeah. and uh, she is fantastically talented both. But you but, know, it, the, but that, that, that thing just, people like that work brilliantly in our industry yeah, yeah. because they're such people. They're people pleasers. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They want people. to please people all the time. Yeah. And uh, that's what we need. People and she's like. also the embodiment, I think, of, I, I saw her last night and, and it's been my privilege to photograph her a few times over the years, both in terms of her dance and now she comes back here as a model for us. Mm. Um, but to see the change in her, the way she is, the confidence, the way she carries herself, and, and the way you know, she just looks so healthy and so yeah. happy. Yeah. And I, I know her boyfriend has a degree of invite. Yeah, <laughs> and, I'm sure. But your gym is is hugely responsible, and I, and I think that's a, I that's so. absolutely amazing. Yeah. So, on that happy note. Yeah, uh, it's been a real pleasure. You are. A, I, I I don't want to sound like a sycophant because I hate that. But you do inspire me. Oh. Uh, I think the gym is a wonderful thing. I think it's great for the village. I think it's great for 
fat people like me who've <laughs> ploughed their way. You don't look fat uh, to me, Paul. Uh, well, yeah, you, I look like a business opportunity to you, Steve. <laughs> I'm acutely aware of it, <laughs> but I'll take that. Uh, what an absolute pleasure. I wish you the best of luck. Of fun. Uh, I look forward to seeing what you do over the next three years, if you manage yeah. to achieve this in these three. God knows what you'll do next, but thank you. Awesome, Paul. <laughs> oh, what an absolutely lovely guy what a pleasure it has been to speak to him over an hour or so uh, if you've enjoyed this podcast i really do hope you have then please do subscribe you can subscribe anywhere you usually get your podcasts you can find us on podbean itunes spotify uh, radio public and of course stitcher uh, you can also uh, nip across if you'd like to uh, go to the home of mastering portrait photography which is our website masteringportraitphotography.com uh, which is all about uh, the passion pleasure pain and the business uh, of portrait photography so if that's your kind of thing then please do head over there if you have any suggestions and there are things you'd like us to um, include in, a, in future episodes of the podcast uh, please do let us know we have a few coming up uh, that deal directly with things that people have emailed in so feel free to do that uh, obviously uh, the podcast is a it's free and we we put quite a lot of effort into it, it might not always sound like it but we do uh, so if you'd like to leave us a review or a rating and or rating then of course uh, we would love that if you have enjoyed the podcast and you have nice words to write then please do put those words down on the iTunes website or on Spotify or anywhere uh, that will take a review that would be really kind of you and we'd really appreciate it if you on the other hand think there are things we could do better then rather than doing that publicly please just email me you can email me at paul at paulwilkinsonphotography.co.uk that's paul at paulwilkinsonphotography.co.uk and on that note it is a beautiful summer's evening here in the uk and i am going to go and have a beer and sit outside and spend a bit of time with the kids so until next time be kind to yourself take care